gentlemen, tomorrow we have our pigeon race. And these are some numbers that I want us to work with today. How many minutes did it take pigeon 1440 to return? 150. 150 minutes. About how many hours would that be, 150 minutes? Two hours and 30 minutes. Two hours and 30 minutes. That's good. Several years ago, I did a pigeon project with a grant from Bell South. And I wanted to involve other schools because now we have a racing pigeon club in the area. And so I thought it'd be fun for two schools to compete. And so I invited two other schools to join in the project and the principals agreed and the teachers agreed. So I wrote a grant to uh, Mississippi Power Educational Foundation and they gave us over $4,000 to construct a loft at each school to buy the supplies needed, to buy books, videos, educational software for graphing. And we get to uh, communicate from school to school and share ideas. We share information and then eventually we'll race each other and compete. So he has 1945666.24. If you'll put a comma, that'll help you read the number. What do you have, Margaret? 18,566.24. So you have an 18 and he has a 19. When the child takes the data from their, their pigeon information, whether it's what types of seeds are in the feed or what color pigeons we have and taking that and analyzing it, breaking it down, those are real numbers and it means something to them. And it's, it's amazing to see how much harder they work at trying to get an answer rather than some number that's just made up in a textbook. It's really giving the students a chance to apply things from his work or their work with the animals to real life and do math, which motivates them, gets them involved in doing math and realizing what math is used for and how it's practical to their everyday lives. All right, we've been talking about letter writing and the parts of the letter. How many parts of a letter do we know right now, Rudy? Five parts. Tell me the top part that we have. Aldrich? The heading. The heading. And what are we going to find in the heading? We're writing letters to pigeon racers just to get their input so we can graph their data, compare and contrast the difference between their birds and our birds, just getting an overall view and practicing the letter writing, which is a big component of the MCT, knowing how to you know, organize your thoughts and punctuate and all those good things. What do you think, Shakira? How many pigeons do you have? Ooh, that's a good one. Last year, Mr. Shoemaker came and asked us if we would like to do the project, and so we decided to go ahead and take it across the board in fourth grade this year. Give me a pigeon strut. That's right. <laughs> I think it has a great impact on the kids because they are interested in it. They have the responsibility of the pigeons. I don't even go down to the loft when they feed. I give them complete control over feeding them, measuring out the food and everything. It would take me all last year just to get them to know how many you know, quarts are in a gallon. But now they know from just the feeding and the measuring of the food. We've tied everything into the framework. Every objective that the students are learning and the teachers are teaching in the classroom is tied in with the pigeons and with the framework. They're writing the letters, they are emailing you know, the schools back and forth, checking on their, their different pigeons. Get in there and get you something to eat. Come on, that's it, go on in. That's it, go on in. Well, we found that the by just the carrying of the pigeons, uh, we can incorporate math, science, writing. For example, we've, we've taken like a, maybe a cup of pigeon food, uh, carry it into the classroom and separate, um, separate the food into the different grains uh, that's there. We can weigh each of those uh, amounts of, of the different types of grains. Uh, to get a percentage, uh, let the kids figure up a percentage according to the weight uh, of that sample. What you have in front of you? Pigeon cloth. Good. What's it made out of? You can touch it. Touch, yeah, touch it. Tap on it. See what it looks like. You can spin it around and look at it. So what we're going to do is today with your writing for your English, you're going to write a description of that cloth. 
So you write a good description, you have a ruler, so you can get the dimensions of it. One thing about this particular project is its ability to integrate all the content areas. Science is a given. The mathematics skills from the state frameworks are integrated. Right, reading, language arts, it I am so impressed to walk in the classroom and see the children developing PowerPoint presentations, editing their writing, emailing their, what they've done to schools across the state. It's a rich experience because they've extended their learning a lot more than they could have done on a worksheet, copying problems from the board, or just reading the story out of a textbook. It has real meaning. Adrian, how far are you from being finished? Hey, I'll hurry, so I need you to enter some data for me. Just as as students in a classroom, some are gifted with writing, some are gifted in reading or mathematics, I've noticed I have a young lady who is very gifted with what I consider technology. I can give her something to do on a computer, and she just doesn't bother me with it. She searches and clicks and finds where she needs to put the data, and she enters it. And so we have a new program that is called WinSpeed that is sold by the American Racing Pigeon Union to help clubs determine the winners of the race. And after I probably showed her three different, uh, three different entries, she did all the rest by herself. And that's, that's basically all I have to do is show her something a few times and she takes off with it. Well, the important part in Ronnie's class is that it's just technology is just a tool for integrating daily curriculum. It's not uh, something that he just uses for drill and practice. It's uh, where he's using real world tools like PowerPoint, Excel to actually teach uh, skills like graphing and presentation and um, those types of skills. The Eyes to the Sky project is just one example of how all of the strategies in our state frameworks, all the state benchmarks and the national benchmarks can be integrated in a way that's not only exciting for the children, but they can actually learn those skills. It's a lot of work, but anything worth having is a lot of work. I'm not sure if, the, if this type of project is for all teachers, but it is beneficial for the children who have teachers willing to try it. This is a project that you can teach across the curriculum and get the children excited. And it may be stressful for a teacher, but it's good for the children, and that's why we're here. 